What's going on, folks? I uh, wanted to go over something freaking amazing that I came across. I mean, it may not be amazing to you guys, but uh, especially for the stuff that I do on a daily basis or will be doing here shortly, um, I needed something that I can automate that didn't cost money that I can implement on the fly. Um, that is also, you know, backed by some pretty good uh, open source support as well as a uh, well known. You know, uh, well, the, the support platform that I'm speaking of is Red Hat. Um, and the application that I'm talking about is Ansible. Um, if you're not familiar with Ansible, um, I'm kind of still new on to this automation scene myself. But it is a daemon that pretty much runs on top of a Linux machine that can go out and auto-configure your devices. And when I say that, I mean, I'm looking at this particularly on Cisco, but this thing does everything um if you go to network modules on their docs.ansible.com site you go to network modules and open this up in a new tab but it's uh pretty cool man this is just some of the devices they have a10 aci arios aos a a o s aruba asa av um i mean Big switch cloud engine. I mean, is you can name it Cumulus, Cloud Vision, Dell. They got F5. I mean, literally anything you want to be able to do. Um, they have module, modules on there um, as far as being able to interact with devices. And then they have NetConf, which, if you're familiar with, is really big on the open, um, the uh, SDN stuff. A lot of these uh, manufacturers use Net, the NetConf API to interact. So if you aren't directly great with Python or whatever um, programming language, or if you are, um, Ansible will be the tool for you because on top of that, Ansible, essentially what it does is uh, it has this concept called modules. And these modules are pretty much Python scripts that the Ansible daemon calls to make your, um, to make your, 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 your calls to the device um, and it uses a the actual configuration file and I'll go into more when I show you guys the example of what I did but it go it uses a configuration format for a, a, a markup language called YML um, which stands for yacht yet another markup language I believe that's what it's called or whatever but it is a is essentially they want to make the scripting side of it or the actual configuration piece of danceable as human readable and as easily to inter and easy to interpret they didn't want it to make it another programming language so it has a very very uh i mean to me it's straightforward it took me a couple of days to get the hang of being able to run these tools but uh i'll show you pretty much how this is built out i built on my vm network i should have got you guys a diagram but anyway um i'm gonna show you on here, let me log into my Ubuntu server. Oh, yeah, so this is my Lubuntu machine, I mean, and right now I have my GNS3 client on there and I actually have a GNS3. Let me show you what it looks like. So here, this Netman switch is actually a switch that's plugged into the Ethernet port of all these routers here. Um, I have a simulated internet connection, and then here is my network manager. I'm calling it a network manager, but what it is actually is a tap interface into my ESXi cloud that I have this um, Ubuntu server built on with Ansible installed on top. So this is the way that I tap my GNS3 network, my GNS3 VM into my actual ESXi lab rack, right? Um, so that way I can spin up VMs on the fly and not have to worry about importing it into the GNS3 topology. I can just have the server running off in my my uh, ESXi cloud or my ESXi um, my my vCenter um, cluster, but then you know still be able to utilize it within GNS3 for testing or whatever. So in this particular case, it's a pretty straightforward configuration. Um, the only interfaces that are configured here are going to be your uplink interface going into the ISP cloud, and then also my management link going into each router. And the only thing that's required for Ansible is um, IP and SSH accessibility. So you just got to make sure that you generate your RSA keys and all that good stuff on your routers um, before Ansible sh can, you know, have the ability to interact with the device. But that's the only prerequisites. But 
unlike a lot of other automation tools, you don't have to have a third party or a, a client version. It's not a server client setup. It's it's literally a server making calls and you have different methods of how it does that. Um, typically, you know, it'd be a, um, what they call Paramico, which is a module in, um, in Python or SSH, just, you know, standard SSH. NetConf, you know, there a bunch of transport uh, opportunities, but as long as you got the layer three connectivity. So, getting right into it, just want to show you guys the structure of the directory. Um, a lot of this files I should clean this up a little bit, but um, I'll tell you the files that I'm working with, just so you guys have an idea on what you know what needs to happen or what needs to be there in order for this to work. So you have to have a um, a host file. And what your host file is, is literally your list of hosts. And they have two different formats you can use, but we're not going to go too crazy into that. But here's one format. Let me go ahead and just view this. In. I'm afraid to use my hotkeys because you put this going into a Linux machine. My Mac doesn't really sync up well with that. So let me zoom in some more. Okay. So your host file. So what you can do, you can actually do groups of hosts. You can do single hosts. You can do have different IPs. If you if you don't have DNS set up in your network, right now I don't have it set up for this lab, but typically you would have DNS set up and you can create these groups. So I can go in and say something like uh, uh, US routers. Then I can go in and say you know German routers and then I can have different host name in there and they can overlap so as you're calling on and what ends will use something called playbooks and actually to actually execute their scripts but when you're calling on your playbooks you reference these groups and then based off of the group that you reference in the beginning of your play um, in the actual task part of the play um, it'll actually execute it on just those set of group um, devices and you get you can get pretty flexible. I mean, I'm just going on a week of, of playing with this thing, and I am just mind freaking blown about what I'm already able to do. Um, and n without any right now, I don't know P Python. I know Perl, but I don't know Python, so I didn't have to interact with any Python code. I didn't have any issues getting this thing installed. It was it was very straightforward. Oh, and let me mention, this is not only just for network devices. You can control servers. You can do Windows boxes. You can do uh, Sun's Lars boxes, you can do uh, Linux machines, and I mean anything that is configurable via the command line or anything that's configurable that PowerShell allows you to do, you can actually, you know, inter you can actually interact with it using Ansible. So once you know this, you know, the, my point of saying that is once you know this, you have now taken yourself out of being a quote unquote network administrator or a quote unquote server administrator. Um, you are now technically a systems administrator, and as money as whatever system you can configure or manipulate using Ansible, you can do that now. So that's one of the uh, awesome, awesome things about it. I mean, obviously, you want to still know the technology that you're running this on, but that's just one of the cool things about Ansible. Um, so this is primarily focused for Cisco for me just for me doing my testing. So I went ahead and built a script here and I'll walk you through the playbook. So this is the playbook. Like I said, it uses the um, YML um, YAML uh, format. So .yml is the actual um, extension. So let me just walk you through. So this particular playbook, what I did here is I'm configuring a DMVPN tunnel and then at the end of it, I have the uh, Ansible um, server displaying out what it pushed to the devices. Right. So let me just give you guys a quick walkthrough. And this is pretty straightforward. So the name is the start of the play. So you, you name the play. It's going to be DMVPN Hub Config. Uh, my host. And remember, I told you this host. So sorry. Let me let me take a step back. So in this directory, you have an Ansible.config. That's not really required because it'll actually use the one in your Etsy um, main directory. But if you want to use one that's more specific. You can create a config file here, and then within that config file, you can specify your transport. Uh, mine is Paramico. Um, your host file is your host, um, host key checking. Um, you'll, you'll kind of find that um, being useful, especially if you never SSH into a box before and you haven't saved your uh, SSH uh, certificates in your known host uh, file. So this helps you bypass that, and you can set the time out of how long it takes for your connections to time out once they've been established and you know have an activity um, so going back to that you know this this is very important so let me go back to the 
new tunnel. So with it working in the same directory, Ansible is going to automatically, it has an order of operations. And if it detects a config file within the main directory, it's going to use that. And based off of that, based on me telling it, it's to use the host file. This is the host file that I have specified. So on this particular one, this first play is going to be configuring router one, right? And you know, that's the IP address that I gave it. So from there, We'll just, you know, not to worry about gather facts uh, and connect connection. I don't want to go too deep into this, but I'll just give you guys a quick run through. Um, the next section, you would set your variables up. And when you do your variables, it means, you know, you can, if R1 has a different username and password than R2, um, you can go ahead and set that individually per play um, within the playbook. So after that, you have your task. And your task is the actual action. So what you do is you name the task, you know, configure tunnel zero R1, and then iOS config is the module that I'm, I picked up to use. Um, and then after that, you have a provider. So the provider is is referencing the variable. It has a very funky way of declaring variables, um, like unlike what I'm used to with Perl or Python. Or, uh, maybe it's more like Python, but I'm, what I'm used to in Perl, um, I'm not used to having it to, to reference py variables like that. We're used to using something like this to reference my variable. But that's not valid here. So... We'll go ahead and uh, move forward with that, and then you can put the lines. So, and it just repeats it repeats itself all the way down um, to all the spokes, right? So, for DMVPN verification, uh, for a new play, what I did is I selected multiple hosts. So I wanted R one, two, three, and four, um, and then from there I called this one CLI and use the name same username and password. And then I'm using iOS command, which is different from iOS config, and I'm doing a show run interface tunnel zero. And then what I did is I registered the output to this variable here, show ton, and then displaying the host name in order to actually display, I use the debug module and then the variable uh, show ton dot standard outlines. Um, what this is going to do is it's going to print it out in a format that you can read it once it hits your, um, your uh, command line on your terminal, I mean. So first off, let's go ahead and clear. And from here, we're going to go to the router and just show you guys that I don't have Tunnel Zero already pre-configured. You see, show IP interface brief, no Tunnel Zero. Show IP interface brief, no Tunnel Zero. And show IP interface brief, no Tunnel Zero. Cool. So let's go ahead and uh, run the script. And it's pretty simple. Um, within the directory, you just run a, co a command called Ansible Playbook, and then the name of the tunnel, I mean the name of the actual um, playbook that you want to specify, and just hit enter, and then watch the magic happen. And what's cool is, like I said, it runs you through the play, and then it tells you the task that it's on, um, and then it tells you the next play, and then the next task, and the next play, and the next task, and so on and so forth. But, you know, this is very simple. I just did a very simple DMVPN, a single hub DMVPN connection, where, you know, the R1 is my hub, R2, 3, and 4 are my spokes. And then to show the verification once it's done, I went ahead and so let me know that it did all the show run. And so it tells me that the things that changed, it tells me, you know, the things that change are going to be correlated in orange. So if I was to go back to go look at what changed, uh, okay, so, let's see. Should have showed it up here. Yeah, so you see how it says change on the task configure tunnel zero. Um, that's just letting me know that the configuration did change and that it did push it. And then this is everything that's on the router now. So if I was to go on to here, I should be able to see like, look, OSPF is already up. So I just do a show run interface tunnel zero, which we already did, or a show IP interface brief. And it shows you the information there. So... I'm mind blown. This is just the tip of the iceberg. I'm responsible for over, you know, 500 network devices. Um, well, actually more than that, over 2000 um, with my new role. So uh, a part of that is auditing and being able to do stuff for this uh, stigs and all this good stuff. Um, and so with this, instead of me having to hand jam a bunch of scripts that I'm going to keep running on solar ones or something like that, I can have my Linux, this, you know, my, my, what we use, uh, you know, my Red Hat, you know, distribution, have Ansible running on there and then be able to do all my reports and all my information gathering. And then also for, you know, for the engineering community, being able to use this for new site deployments. And then, like I said, the, the, 
it's so many opportunities that you can do. There's another part that they have for templates in that you can actually generate templates based off of custom inputs. So, you know, there's so many different um, avenues that you could take this, but this is just something that I did on the fly um, using GNS3. You know, this, it, you can use anything that has SSH enabled pretty much. And you can, and, and if you know the commands and a module is not already there, you can build your own module that you can have Ansible interact with to make things a little bit more easier for you when actually deploying or working on um, these devices. So, like I said, this is just one of those things that I'm just super ecstatic about and I'm, I'm pretty much losing my mind um, as far as like all the things that you can do with it and just already thinking about all the possibilities. So, uh, if you guys like that, uh, let me know, like the video. Um, Leave any comments, but yeah, I'm super excited right now. All right, talk to y'all later.